In a crisis, any delay can be fatal. But all of the women in tonight's special episode have the skills and the confidence to act quickly and get the job done. We begin on Bull Shoals Lake in Arkansas on July 15th, 1993. David and Judy Evanson and their three children were inexperienced boaters, but they had planned to spend a pleasant day out in the flat bottom pontoon boat they had rented. We had stopped a few places to swim right on the shoreline. The kids had a real good time. Then we decided, well, we better get back. As we were going along in the lake, I was thinking this was, it was absolute paradise. I mean, it was so gorgeous. The day was beautiful. I said to Mark, why don't you go up there and sit next to Daddy? Never realizing there was any danger. Okay, come on. But I said, you know, just be careful, be careful. Don't lean forward too much. Six-year-old Mark's sister, Lori, and her friend were also along on the outing. <laughs> we're going at a good speed. Not really fast, but pretty fast. Mark is just laughing, really having a, a good time. engine in neutral. I'm thinking he's got a life vest on. He should come to the surface. But he wasn't there. And then I looked down and I saw his two really, really pale legs just coming right out of the back. His life jacket was caught in the propeller. I was so hysterical. I just started yanking, pulling as hard as I could. I was trying to undo the buckles, but it was just wrapped to his body as tight as it could be. I was thinking, he shouldn't have fallen off. I should have been holding his arm. It felt to me like I had killed my son. <laughs> Shelly Meyer and her niece happened to be out on the same part of the lake that afternoon. We passed by a pontoon boat and noticed they were waving, but that's very typical. Boaters always wave back and forth. So we waved back, actually, and kept going. I could see his face two, three feet underwater. I felt absolute terror that we weren't going to be able to get him up. If Mark died, I think I would have gone insane. We were in a very remote area, and we weren't familiar with this part of the lake. On the second time past the pontoon boat, we realized that maybe they weren't just waving. Finally, we understood what they were saying. I knew that before you approach a boat, you ask if the key is out of the motor so that there isn't a chance for um, the motor starting up. The parents were panicked. I, I just couldn't let go. And she just took control and said, let go, I will get him. I will bring him up. I couldn't see much of anything, but I knew the life jacket styles, so I knew kind of where to reach or what I wanted to do. He starts sinking. I got a good look at him, and his lips were just blue. 
I thought his daddy's gone. That's it. Now what am I going to do? What am I going to do? He's just a sweet little boy and he's gone. The Kationers, Chuck Burmas and his wife, noticed something was wrong. I radioed in the marina and told them that it looked like we had a potential drowning. Missouri Water Patrolman Michael Cochran headed to the scene. When I have a person ran over by a propeller, I've only had two survive in 22 years. So I just automatically assumed the worst. The minute I got him out of his life jacket, the extent of his injuries really became visible. His arm was barely attached, and his stomach was lacerated several times, quite deep. The first thing I did was to feel for his pulse. And when I didn't feel that, I just started in with the CPR steps. I think I did about six rounds of CPR when I first felt the pulse, and he was starting to cough. He was gurgling a lot. He wasn't conscious at all. Water Patrol, Missouri Water Patrol. What are you? I didn't want to move him because I didn't know if maybe the propeller had severed some ribs and the slight movement could have put a rib into the lung or something. So I tore the jacket off the propeller and I told Chuck to take off. We had probably moved, oh, maybe a couple hundred yards, and the boy just quit breathing again. He still had a pulse going. I probably gave him, could have been 15 breaths, and he starts breathing on his own. Not knowing the extent of the injuries, the ride back to the dock, even though it may have only taken 12 minutes, it, it just felt like forever. Rescue units, including an Ozark County ambulance, were waiting at the marina. I can see Mark thrashing and screaming. And I'm thinking, do I get to say goodbye to him? Are they even going to pause for me? But they didn't. They put him in the helicopter, and it took off. Six-year-old Mark Evanson was taken to Arkansas Children's Hospital, where he was treated by a trauma team, including surgeon Charles Wagner. He had a fracture of the right arm, bruises and contusions on the left chest, and injury to his liver and spleen. But kids in general are tough. They respond very well to injuries if you do your job. We knew that he was held underneath the water for three to four minutes. Most children can tolerate that if they're brought back through CPR rapidly like he was. But we would have to wait to see what would happen. Early the next morning, Mark regained consciousness. Mark underwent surgery to repair his badly damaged right arm, but his liver and spleen have healed on their own. Mark is just fine now. He's wonderful. He's back to normal, but it was a long, it was a long road. Shelly knew CPR and did it so well. I mean, it was impressive. There's a big difference between being taught to do something and just doing it. She deserves all the credit in the world. She saved his life. Mark's mom sent a letter and a picture of him. I was just amazed. If you saw Mark's school picture, I mean, he's so cute. I just felt like you saw so much in his smile. I feel very honored that I was part of this team that helped save Mark's life. and. I think there will always be a connection with him. Thank God Shelly was there when we needed her. Mark is here with us. They gave him back to me.